shooters have come a long way. From the way we maneuver around the world, to the way we avoid enemy fire. From the way we interact with the environments, to the way we engage our enemies. Some super realistic, some not so much, some that require tactical advantage. Sound suppressors on. Some against non human enemies. Some against non-living ones. And some that simply ask you to survive. As the shooter has evolved, so has the way we've been asked to play. From tactics and maneuvers, to playing online with both friends and enemies. My name is Proto, and if you're killing things by yourself, you're going to need some solo shooter tactics. Now the first thing you're going to want to do in regards to, to shooters when you're playing by yourself is actually consider what type of weapons you will be using. Um, you have the ability most of the time with most games to go in figure out exactly what kind of weapons are available to you at the start, what kind of weapons will be available to you later on in the game. Uh, and I choose Rainbow Six Vegas 2 for this because it's a lot easier to show you what I'm talking about versus just telling you. Weapon selection is key. In any modern shooter, be it Rainbow Six or Battlefield or Call of Duty or even Halo, you're going to be set up with a bunch of different classifications of weapons. Now, you have the opportunity to pick up a weapon and figure out whether or not you're proficient with it. Mess around a bit, shoot at your friends, you know, pick up a weapon in a... Uh, multiplayer game, figure it out. Most of the time my loadout generally consists of a medium to long range weapon and a long range weapon because I'm really uncomfortable with letting people get too close. But in most shooters you have a bunch of other classifications. Submachine guns, good for close to medium range, mostly close. You have your light machine guns, which are good for suppression at medium range, keeping people's heads down, or just uh, throwing a metric shit ton of bullets down range. Your assault rifles, which are good for medium to long range, really depending on how they're set up. In Rainbow Six, I go with the 5.52 Commando, the very first weapon you start with. And of course, they have everything all the way down to the, uh, the AK-47, the L-85, but uh, 5.52 Commando. Um, and to allow for, for mid to long range, I generally put an, an ACOG or a 6X scope on it, uh, just to make sure that, uh, that everything goes well. Uh, so we're going to set an ACOG on there long-range weapon, sniper rifle for myself, but to continue on, shotguns. Good at excessively close ranges. Basically, it's a one-shot kill unless they're wearing a metric shit on the body armor. So, after figuring out what weapons you're proficient with, get a, I mean, get a basic style, get a basic platform down for the, for the game so that you know, uh, whatever game you're playing, so you know what weapons you're proficient with in, in across the board. And a shotgun in one game is going to be similar to a shotgun in another. A sniper rifle in one game is going to be similar to a sniper rifle in another. Uh, the one thing that, that generally annoys me is somebody taking a, a semi-automatic or fully automatic sniper rifle and going to work with it and saying, oh, you know, good job. Well, you managed to hit them five times in, in the chest within a couple of seconds. And that's not, that's not good enough. Because if it requires five or six shots, I mean, you get one shot, they go around the corner, and that's the end of it with a bolt-action rifle. Most of the time in most games, you're going to be able to kill them with one shot. If you hit him in the head or what have you, which you're supposed to be doing with the rifle anyway, hiding and whatever, you're, you're good. So uh, try to stick to the bolt-action as much as you can. Uh, in regards to this, this really isn't relevant to what I'm talking about, so we'll skip that, and I'll show you, uh, show you what I'm talking about in regards to weapons. Now with an assault rifle, or carbine, uh, depending on, on what you're using, um, you'll be able to engage people at medium to long range. This right here is what I would classify as a medium range target. 
this being a close range target, while it does work, they're too close to you. So with an assault rifle, you have the ability to say, take cover behind something, don't let them see you or be able to shoot at your entire body, and take them out. When you're playing any kind of shooter by yourself, be it yeah, Left 4 Dead, Contagion, Rainbow Six, do not ever walk backwards. It's a very good idea to make sure you're looking where you're going, because if you're walking backwards, like this poor sap here, you would walk right into him, and he would kill you before you had the opportunity to respond. If you can help it, Avoid having your back opened any place you don't know where it's coming or going. So, okay, well, I know that this house is empty. I know that the door is closed. All the windows are intact. Nothing has happened to this house. I can turn my back to it without having a problem. Because I already know what's behind me. Checking your corners, making sure everything's good. Check your surroundings. Make sure that nobody's trying to sneak up on you and kill you. I mean, you're playing by yourself here. You don't have your friends with you, so they can't watch your back. When entering a structure when using an assault rifle, do not stand directly in front of the door. You stand in front of this door, somebody could be standing here in a corner with a shotgun, like this here, just waiting for you to enter. You're done. You're toast. Or having somebody standing off just to the side, so that when you enter, you'll have to turn to shoot them. Oh, that's not very friendly either. You're going to die before you know it. So when you're going into any structure, it doesn't matter what it is, Next to it, entrance, next to it, you'll be able to see anybody that's there. Anybody on the inside won't be able to tell whether or not you're on one side of the door or the other. But if they're on the inside, shooting at this side of the wall here, you already know where they are. You, you know that there's somebody inside of this building. So, you wait. Stupid zombie. Now I myself tend to, to have my eyes on the same place where the weapon is, is hold it up for, you know, held up from. So the weapon's being held up against the right shoulder, so I'm going to be on the left, you know, the, the, the left side of the door looking into the right side of the room. Before going into it, make sure that there's nobody in it, checking from one side to the other. Whether it be starting from the left, moving over to the right, and then moving in, I never just blindly walk into a room. You blindly walk into a room, Somebody standing anywhere in here is going to kill you. Also, even with the door closed, most bullets go through doors. Like in Contagion, it'll just straight up shred the door. And anything behind it is going to get hit. And that works both ways. So uh, mind, your, mind your surroundings. So walking into a room, the easiest direction to see, seeing as that you're standing on the left side of the door, open up door, the easiest direction to see. Move in a little bit, have a look around, and then keep going. All right. I mean, yeah, you can you can step to the side because you've already seen what's here. Now, entering a smaller room in a structure is slightly more difficult, and the reason for that is it's close quarters. And if you're using an assault rifle, you've got mid to long range. So instead of walking into the room, open the door, Look from one side to the other. Check all of your visibility. Check your corners. Because I know if I'm holding a shotgun or holding some kind of a weapon, the first place I'm going to be is in a corner looking at this door. Or be standing behind the door. Or uh, an example of this, standing in a corner where this, uh, where this van is. Man, I hate the doors in this game. You know what? I'm just going to get rid of it. With a door out of the way, you can see the corner. You know the corners, the, the far corners. Now, look, this could be a little tricky. And the reason for that is you're by yourself. So walking into the room, you are blind here and you are blind here. If you've been into this room before, if you've had the, the opportunity to go and check out the map before trying to get into a fight with somebody here, you know the best places to hide. You know the easiest places to hide. I know that I cannot get back into that corner because that water heater is there. So, that being the easiest thing to see, get into a position where you can see it, just like that, and then look in the other corner. You're by yourself here. Like I said, you don't have the ability to, you know, you run in and check the left, and one of your buddies checks the right, and you clear it all tactical style. You're by yourself. You are alone in this big world filled with zombies, or mutants, or aliens, or whatever you're doing. 
Sometimes when you walk into a room, you will be aware of the fact that there are multiple ways in and multiple ways out. If that's the case, you walk into a room that has multiple ways in and multiple ways out, check the entrances first. The window and this door. If you already know where it is, if you have no idea how many entrances are in there, walk in and check it like you did before. Stand on the, the side where this, this door is. If there is no door, then whatever side you feel comfortable with, see what you can see, and then go into the room. You don't want to be walking in, get surprised by somebody pumping you in the back with a shotgun. What? Zombie playing basketball? Being in a medium to long range setting, you have the ability to engage people who are directly in front of you. You put yourself in positions where you have the ability to engage people at medium to long ranges, like the folks here on the street, the zombies back here uh, up against this corner, or, or what I would classify as long range, but nonetheless, you have the ability to see what you can engage, or you have the ability to engage what you can see. If you can engage it, you shouldn't be looking at it, or at least you shouldn't have the ability to look at it. So with a medium to long range weapon, keep yourself at medium to long range to all possible things that you will be shooting at. So, standing in the middle of the street here with a pistol or a shotgun is not a good idea, because the chances of you being able to kill whatever you can see, and in turn whatever can see you, is not a good idea. You're going to end up getting yourself killed, you're going to rage quit a perfectly good game, and yeah, nobody wants that. Now, with the release of GoldenEye, weapons started doing things that they do in real life, which is needing to reload. Now, I know there are a couple other games that had that, but nothing quite as predominant as GoldenEye 64 on the Nintendo 64. The reason reloading has been added as a uh, tactical idea or a realistic idea is it requires you to stop. It allows somebody to catch you with your pants down, quote-unquote. To avoid being caught with your pants down, you're shooting at this guy, and, and you're in a firefight with him, and you get him in the head, and he's dead. You try to engage somebody else with only five bullets. You're going to have a problem, especially if you're a medium to long range, and you don't really have the ability to hit them in the head. Or even with this guy, you hit him a couple of times, you shoot him in the head, three bullets to go after somebody else. Eventually, you're going to be able to shoot him, and you're out of bullets which means you'll need to reload before you can shoot. Now, if it's a, a shooting target, somebody that's going to shoot back at you, uh, you're, you're done. Most of the time, I find myself being killed while I'm reloading, regardless of whether or not I've, I've reloaded before. So it's a smart idea, no matter what you're playing or what you're doing or what kind of shooter, if it involves needing to reload, as soon as you're done handling whatever business it is that you need to handle in said shooter, Find a nice place to sit down, hide, and reload. Then get back to it. Because moving from one battle to the next without having enough bullets, without having enough gun juice in the weapon, is going to piss you off. But we're finished with assault rifles, so zombie, take the assault rifle.